Okay guys, I'm playing with these little bunny ears and you definitely can use your Artisto pads. Where's my cover? I know you guys are familiar with these. I love them. Um, this is my spring 2024. Um, these are just so great for the beginner. You get three packs of them. They're 140 pound cold press. Um, and if you use my link, it will take you to the right one. Somebody said they just got on and ordered it and they got 90 pound, which is interesting. Didn't even know they had that. But these are really great. They do well with water. Um, they're perforated, so you can gift give them if you wanna tear them out. And they've got a really lovely texture. Um, and actually what I'm thinking, well, let's do it on here. I, I, I'm going to trans do some more of these on these little Strathmore cards you've seen me use before. I love them. Um, they come with a beautiful little um, envelope that has that nice torn rugged edge. I just love them. So once I paint on here, I'm actually going to paint some more onto my cards. Let me just start by drawing out. Um, let me do my two flowers. So I'm gonna have two flowers down here like that. I'm just going to do my guidelines. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And these guidelines, I you, you see me use a lot. I'm going to spread that one out a bit. I was trying to avoid this one here, but that's okay if they run into each other a little bit. So I'm going to come out here um, these guidelines just help me keep my petals all directed towards the center of my flower. Let me zoom in a bit there so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm going to create, and I love a real organic outer edge. So I don't typically make my flowers just the standard. It's like, remember when you were a kid and you do the lollipop trees? Isn't that funny? Um, that's what these will kind of remind me of if I go too circle, too much of a perfect circle. So I like to make them a little wonky. Let's do these like this. There we go give them some character and interest. Okay, so we've got our little flowers here and maybe what I'll do is go into those with um, some pen and ink. I'll use my Ohuhu markers, which I'm loving because my microns were just about ready to need to be replaced. I've had them for years. Okay, from here, I want to create, let's see, where is, so this is like what I'm going to be creating here. So I'm gonna put this up for reference. This is one I just did a little bit earlier. By the way, um, when I get ready to paint, I'm going to be using my, my Lang paints. Here they are right here. As you know, I love them. I just had to refill a couple because I tend to use my rose red all the time, my yellow green, my sap green. So I'm always refilling those. But I love this little palette. It's a great beginner's palette because number one, it's excellent quality. Paul Rubens um, distributes them and I just love their company. Um, and they're just really rich and creamy and vibrant, but yet you can get them pretty transparent. So I like those paints. Uh, okay, let's go back to this and get my little reference photo here. And I'm going to draw my little bunny ear there we go and then let's do another one right here and this one's going to be <clears throat> kind of bent over let's see like that and coming in so there we go we got our little bunny ears they're so cute Let's widen that a bit. Okay. I ran out of my pencils that I love that have that little eraser on them. I need to get more, but I bought some other supplies this month. So, But this is a great little eraser, by the way. It's made by Mitsubishi. Um, I'll get my link for you. 
And this thing will literally last forever. You just keep pulling this string and more eraser comes out. I love that eraser. It's pretty heavy duty. Okay, now I'm gonna create the little pink parts in the center, so cute. And I'm not sure you can see this. So what I'll do is I'm gonna draw this in ink for you. I'm using the, you get this whole set. Oh, oh hoo, hoo was so nice to send these to me. Thank you, oh, hoo, hoo, for even noticing my little account. Um, and it came with a bunch, but I typically, my Micron pen is a 0 0.8. This is a 0 0.7, let's see. Yeah, 0 0.7, but I really like it. And let me just draw this out. If you want this um, drawing, I'll either make a kit. They kind of take me a while. So most times I just offer them free for you. But if you do want them on my Etsy, they're only 250 and I get a percentage of that. And I like it because it's, I give you a swatch, I give you my drawing, the original, and some little guidelines that go with my tutorial kit. Okay, and then here's our middle, of course. I don't like just a regular old circle. I try and make it a little wonky because I'm kind of wonky, I suppose. And then here's my petals. There we go. Sketch those out. Wonky, wonky, wonky. And almost looks like two eyes, doesn't it? That's kind of funny. Huh. Two flower eyes. So a couple things I'm thinking about as far as composition here is I've got three main elements. Um, they're kind of my focal point. So I'm gonna to wanna to bring some cohesiveness to them. Then I'll probably add some little leaves, maybe some coming up here that will kind of like almost frame my painting, kind of like what I did here. I just organically did that, but uh, that would be my purpose behind it. Um, so I'll do that. Let me erase my guidelines here. There we go. So as you can see, that pen is already dry. And then use my old ancient brush that I don't paint with, because look at this thing, you guys. It is completely falling apart. I've had that since college days. I don't even think this brand's around anymore, Robert Simmons. I've sure never seen it. So let me just erase my lines. I'm gonna put that one back in. I somehow got rid of that. There we go. And erase the line in his little ears. Actually, what would work really well here too is that kneaded eraser you see me use a lot. You can kind of erase a larger area. So I just roll that over it and it pretty much picks up any pencil lines I might have on there. This thing's so crazy handy. There we go. That works really well. And I don't even know how long I've had this little kneaded eraser. Probably decades, you guys. I don't think they ever wear out. You'd think it would just finally get dirty and you couldn't use it, but it doesn't seem to. And I've used it for years. Okay. There's our little ears and our couple little flowers we're going to paint. What I'm gonna do first is lay down a brown wash because I want um, to kind of know where my placement of dark and lights are. So today I'm using my eight Velvet Touch Round. As you know, I love, but you know what? Use those Degados I always uh, share with the beginners because where is my Degado? Um, you get a whole set of these, and I've had these for a year, and look at how snappy that tip is. I love it. Um, you get this whole set of Degados for 15 bucks, I think, and I've had them for a year, and they're still holding up shockingly well. So if I feel like if you take care of your brushes, you know, when you're done with them, just put them back into that point, I think they last really well. So those are the Degados for a beginner if you're not quite ready to spend, you know, eight to and up for a Princeton brush. 
if you do want to, I'd say get the L8 Velvet Touch Round. These are great. Um, love the feel of them, and they're a short handle. I tend to paint close, so a short handle is good for me. All right, let's start here. So I've got some of my, let's see, I've got um, in my palette here some Van Dyke Brown, Burned Brown. I kind of have a mix of everything, and I don't normally use cold black. Um, my choice would normally be Payne's Gray, but I did use some black in here. So I've got a little bit of a mix of brown and back, black. My go-to to start, you always start with a lighter wash, of course, because we can always darken up. So I have this at about 80 water, 20 paint, and then tap, 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 tap. You want to get that excess water off. And anchoring the side of my hand, I'm just going up in really light pressure. I could even use my... I've always got my six round and my eight. Uh, the six long round is just a little bit longer and thinner. I can kind of get a smaller point with that. Actually, let's use that one. And I've got my two containers of water, by the way, you guys. So let's, let's go with that one. Tap, tap, tap. And I wanna get, now I'm not just coloring in my entire ear. I'm kind of, tap, 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 um, feeling it out a little bit, and I'm leaving those white spaces. So just keeping that in mind. And now what I'll do is go in there and I'm just rinsing my brush, tapping it off. Uh, let me grab a paper towel here and tap it off a bit and then go in and just blend that a bit, but don't completely get rid of all that beautiful white space. Keep some of that in there. I'm just really kind of blending it. And then let's do the other side here. So I've got that brown and black, tap, 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 get that extra water off. We don't want puddles. Yeah, I think this six round works a little bit better. Um, it just has that finer line. There we go. And then wash, rinse my brush, tap, tap, tap. And softening, going alongside of those lines I already put in there and just kind of softening. Now I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit of that black. and create some darkness in here. And then I'm going to rinse my brush, tap it off, and go alongside that. So I get a little nicer blend here. This is using that beauty of your watercolors. I'm always softening these lines, going up against them with a rinsed, thirsty brush and just kind of uh, softening those lines. So before it dries too much, I want to go into the center and create that beautiful pink. I've got a little palette here because I use this color all the time of my rose pink, rose red, sorry, that's in my lane. And I've got a pretty light value here, meaning it's 80% water, 20% paint. And I'm just going to go into the center here. I'm kind of using the side of my brush. Now that's a little darker than I wanted to. So wash and rinse my brush and let's just lighten that up with some water. I really wanted to get some of this brown paint to go in there a bit to kind of blend in there. Um, let's see, okay. So going into the bottom of the ear, and I'm still using that um, six. Wash, rinse my brush, um, dab it off on, hold on one second here, on my paper towel, just a little bit. 
and kind of drawing out, pulling out some of those little bunny ears. Okay, let's go to our other ear. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, you guys, such a cute little bunny. And what a cute little card, right? So I do the same thing. I'm laying down using the tip of my brush and maybe it's a little darker up here because his little ear is folded over like that. And now wash and rinse my brush. Tap, tap, tap. And going up and into, clean my brush, tap it off. Just smooth out those hard lines. There we go, like that. And this time before it completely dries, I want to go into the bottom here, just like I did here, and just kind of tap in with that darker color. And there we go. Okay. Let's do the other side, same way down near the bottom. I've got, see, I don't want to puddle there. So just look at all that liquid that came off. We don't want that. So this will have a tiny bit of shadow there too. Wash, rinse my brush. There we go. I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, actually, we might want to make this side a little darker. Ooh. See, that was too much. Tap off my brush. And it's too black, so I'm going to grab some of that brown. Always tapping off my brush, guys. Lift some of that out, because that got a little too dark. It wasn't the color I was intending. There we go. Maybe add in some of that brown near the bottom. There we go. A little bit of that brown. It's so pretty. And then I'm just gonna soften that line. Soften that line, the damp brush. Okay, let's go into the pink now. So I grab my pink. There's still some on my palette here. Again, that's 80% water, 20% paint and go in, use the side of my brush so I can get a wide brush stroke there and draw it down. Wash, rinse my brush, kind of blend that out, maybe get a little bit of that brown in there. And then I am gonna go into the bottom again with more of like probably 80 pigment, 20 water, and just tap into the bottom there, kind of like I did on the other ear. Although that looks pinker, doesn't it? Wash her into my brush and damp brush, just guiding some of that upwards and soften any hard lines. Okay. So we're good. Oh, let's do the top of his ear here. I'm going to just create maybe where the bend is. It might be kind of a dark spot there. And then I'm going to soften that line by going up next to it with a damp brush like that. And maybe a long, I'm almost running out of my brown here. Maybe along here. Really, oh, that little tip on this brush is so wonderful. Oop, too black, okay. And then same thing, wash into my brush, go alongside that hard line and soften it. There we go. Just very subtle, but yet can really make a difference. There we go. And that 
I feel like kind of gives a little bit of an illusion that it's turning on its side. I just added, I felt like it needed a little bit more. Rinsing my brush and picking up that line. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. Let's go on to our flowers. So I'm gonna switch back to my eight because it's a little bit larger. And I think the inside of my flowers, let's see. Let's do the inside in like a yellow gold. So my yellow ochre, my um, gold, like this. And, oop, I got a drip there. Let's see if I can pick that up. There we go. And I'm going to tap in here just into the center rinse my brush and I'm going to grab my pink because I want the pink to come in all right of course my rose red Quinn magenta my favorite color so funny I always try to paint with a different color and I end up at the end of my painting going oh my gosh there's that pink again all right I'm gonna go out Point, press. Now my brush is a little too dry, so that's why it did that dry brush. Point, press, point, press, and there we go. And look at the beautiful yellow that got in there. I love that. Pick up a little bit more paint. So I'm just barely touching into that pink. Point, press. Wet my brush a tiny bit, but tap it off. Point, press, and bring it around. There we go. Love the yellow mixing in there. Point, press. So you want to kind of work fast here because you want that yellow to be kind of wet. Point, press. Point, press. There we go. I love the yellow mixing in. I'm just going to my palette and picking up paint, using a little bit of the side of my brush, touching into that yellow, pressure on my brush, so I'm opening that belly. There we go, my yellow's just starting to dry, so not quite getting the spread and flow. When I do this on my own, I'm not explaining, I work a tiny bit faster. So there you go. I think that's so pretty. Let's do the same thing here. Um, we could actually, I'm kind of debating. I feel like I want to go into that with maybe a tiniest bit of brown, just to bring some cohesiveness between the ears and the flowers. So I've got some of this brown on my palette, just tiniest bit tapping off because I don't want it to have too much pigment. You can also tap off on your little paper towel here. See all that liquid that came off? And let's just go in here and add a few little dots. So see right away that pulled the ears down into the flowers and gave it a little bit of coherency. Tap off one more time. Look at all the liquid that came off. And there we go. So I think that really, really helps. Okay, let's do our other flower here. So I started with that yellow and actually I think I mixed cad yellow and yellow ochre loading the side of my brush, never going in with the point. We always protect our points. And tap, tap, tap on the side. If you think you have too much, just tap it off on your paper towel. And I'm gonna, I want a little bit more though. Tap, tap, tap. And just dotting in here. And the reason I want just a tiny bit more is because when I use the pink, I want it to blend out. So wash and rinse my brush and let's go into our pink. So I grab a little bit more pink. 
Now this is a 50-50, 50 pigment, 50 water. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more water. I don't mind if it's a little bit different or darker hue than that one. And then tapping into that yellow, grabbing that yellow, just with the point. Push down. Now I can already tell I don't have enough water on here. There we go. So it's a little different color, which is totally fine. I wanna work fast here because I want to do this while that yellow is wet. Just like that. Point, press, and really kind of drawing on with the tip of my brush and the side of my brush. There we go. Rinsing my brush a bit, picking up some more paint. Now, because I was kind of talking, not paying attention, I didn't get as much of that yellow because I didn't work quite as quickly as this one. Point press, there you go. And pick up a last bit of paint, touching into that yellow, I'm trying to aim my arms so that I'm not completely in the way. It's kind of awkward. There we go. And I try to use a little darker values in certain places. Now I'm gonna go in there while it's still a little damp and let's just pick up some of that brown again so we can bring some of that coherency. Oh, I use this one. Get a little bit more water. Now that's an awful lot of water. See how it's just moving everywhere and really puddling? So tap, tap, tap. And then I will also tap onto my little paper towel and look how much comes off. So we don't wanna go onto our painting like that because that would just take over and go everywhere. And it still kinda is. I've still got a lot of water on there. I just wanted enough to blend a little bit. And it just brings this beautiful coherency between the ears and the flowers. So it's not just like yellows right there and nowhere else. All right, now we're gonna do a few leaves just to kind of frame his little eyes. Let's see, um, I'm gonna use my, let me grab my, oh, here's my greens right here. Um, let's use, so I've got my sap green in there. There we go. It's kind of like a brighter traditional green, I think. And then I've got my darker olive green. Those are just kind of my go-to greens. You can use whatever your go-to greens are. You might like that yellow green, which I actually also love. And might be good in here because it, it's a little bit yellower and it might bring some coherency with that yellow. And then I'm just going to start, let's see, let's create a little petal here. Now, normally I would have worked quickly and got this petal like here, it's still wet to blend in with that. I really like that look of blending in. So let's try to do that. Point press like that. Might add some of that tree green. I add that over here. And I like this tree green. I don't know if you can see me doing that. No, nope, I don't think you could. Um, because it does have some yellow in it. There we go. And while that's drying, I'm going to use my little, where is my six long round? And let's just go in there with some of that brown. And tapping off my brush and create some fun little stems here. There we go. Okay, so it's kind of framing 
our little ears and things. Okay, start over with our greens, grabbing my eight round and using a little bit of the side of my brush. I want them to kind of curve like that. Maybe one's peeking out here. And then before that dries, I want to go in with my six again and add in that brown. Tap, tap, tap. You can tap it off on your paper towel as well. And I love that when it does that. Got one over here. There we go. Very pretty. Now I'm gonna use that six round and go into that light green and create a couple more. There we go. So we've got these beautiful pieces coming out. Let's do a couple right here. Um, how about if we do something like that. That's kind of pretty. Just some of these little, there we go. And I'll go in there with some of my darker green. Maybe even some of that brown. I always love brown with green. I think it's so pretty and it's bringing that brown in around our painting so we don't just all of a sudden have brown up in the ears and that's it. And just play with these leaves. Remember to make some of them darker, some of them lighter, different shapes and so on because you don't want um, you know everything the same color. I might add a couple leaves right here Point press just like that. There we go. Just to bring a little fluff there. And maybe one here. I'm going to switch to my eight. So wash and rinse that one. And then I'll add that over here too, of course. Pick up some of that sap green. And let's add some things right here. Point press to make some of those leaves. Point press like that. There we go. Maybe one here just to kind of fill this out. And now let's go create this on the other side. So you can kind of play here, do where you feel like, but making sure it's all, watch where your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, your leaves are pointing, okay? And watch your white space. Your white space is like an object as well. So kind of be conscious of the shapes that you're creating with this white space, that it's part of your composition. So I'm going to go in with these little ferny type leaves like that, maybe one here. And then I'll draw in, rinse my brush, pick up some of that brown while it's wet. Tap, tap, tap. You can tap it off on your paper towel as well. And just holding my brush vertical and just tapping in. I love, love, love when brown and green mix. I think it's just so pretty. And there you go. I'm, I think I'm pretty much done. The only thing I see I could do is I feel like I want some darker values over here. So maybe some of this olive green, which I've got here too. Pick up a little bit more of that. And I'm gonna use a darker value. So 80 pigment, 20 water and maybe do a couple darker ones here. I don't wanna to take too much away from the rest of my painting. Some little dabs there. Maybe 
be here. There you go. And I think I'm done. There you go. I hope you give this a try. If you want this little drawing, I think I may make a kit out of this. It could be kind of fun, and that way you get the colors, you get the um, the little um, drawing, and that's my dried out micro pen. You could even go in here, play. I know a lot of you like playing with these little micron pens, and. I've been really into them. I kind of go through phases, but I've been kind of into them lately. It's my lazy way of adding detail, honestly. There you go. You could even add in some dots in here. Yeah, it's, it's really, for me, I'm not a detail painter, but this makes me feel like I've got something in there that's kind of interesting. All right, you guys, have fun. I hope you enjoy that. Happy painting.